Well, welcome in, folks. This is This Week in Pearl, a new community affairs show where we will bring you everything that is going on in the community, in our state legislature, and things just going on around town inside the city of Pearl. For this first installment, we're going to start off with our mayor, Jake Windham, who is uh, kind enough to join us and will be a, a staple here on the program because this is a great outlet for you all to be able to find out what's going on in the city um, you know, because many times you can't make it out to, to board meetings. And I think it's it's important, uh, Mayor, that, you know, you said your whole administration is about transparency. So being able to keep an informed public is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that we've tried to work on since uh, I've came into office from the board meetings being recorded live as well as our website, trying to put information on our financial audit just so we can inform our citizens about where we are and the stability that's been provided. So, uh, <clears throat> and this is just another measure that we're we're putting in place to say, hey, you know, this is this is where we want to talk to our people. We understand, and um, I've, I've been quoted saying this before. We we know that our people are the chief stockholders. They're the one that pay the taxes, and and um, our loyalty is to them to make sure that we're telling them what's going on in their city that they own. Well, I think it's uh, probably something new for you. Did you ever think that you would become the mayor of a tropical rainforest? We have seen more rain uh, in this uh, fall and winter than I can ever remember before. Well, the the, the difficult part of that is um, when you try to go do work in this type of weather, especially with heavy equipment, you usually make a bigger mess and you don't do the job that needs to be. So there's there's a there's a finishing a finishing aspect to doing heavy equipment work especially on some of these work orders i know that there's some people probably out there on some uh long-term special projects that we're working on that have not seen this it's not because we don't want to be there it's just simply because of the fact that this rain has uh paralyzed us um it's paralyzed us in other areas and infrastructure wise but uh lord willing this this spring comes on we'll have some dry times matter of fact i talked to the public works director yesterday and he said jake he said you know um the last couple of weekends we've seen some uh, nice weather we might have to change what we're doing and you know work some weekends in order to push some of these work work orders out and <clears throat> one of the things that i'm most concerned about is is, is doing work production i i you know i kind of live by this uh mantra that uh if, if you tell people something you do it you get up every day you get you're, you're very aggressive about it you go out and uh you have a strategic plan that you put in place and you implement and when i can't do that then you you get creative in order to make sure that that plan is fleshed out and and is executed execution is the importance of i uh, think the most important thing that a mayor can possibly do in a community execute the vision in infrastructure, in, in, in parks and rec, in, in financial stability in the city, making it happen. Don't talk about it. Actually do it. And we've, we, can, we can say that we've done those things at this well, time. One of the things that I've noticed, and just from being able to drive around town, you can see a difference. Yes, there are still areas of the city that are – that still need work with drainage and there are some areas where water still ponds when we get a ton of rain which we've seen a lot of but it, for the most part there's a lot of areas of the city where we've seen improvements of water moving and not backing up yeah and <clears throat> i told someone yesterday uh, i had a friend of mine send me a picture of some of our public works guys in a ditch removing a, an, an obstruction so effort goes a long way, having a plan in place. When we see severe weather over the past two and a half years, when we know it comes in, you know, we have an automatic I – mean, we can meet, but everybody that's affected, the department heads that are affected by this type of weather, they know what to do. We're going to be presetting barricades. We're going to already have things in place from a public work side to, a, uh, to the fire department, from a rescue side to the PD side. You know, so those things are already um, – things that we implement and everybody knows we roll into a uh, emergency operations app that we have on our phones and those divisions and those excuse me in those departments that we know what everybody's doing so when when the bad times come as far as the weather's concerned you're going to see a presence in the city and i think that's what makes the difference when we can't control what the lord brings us uh, but we can control how we react and um having a uh, having a good response it's part of being diligent and also trying to take care of our citizens. You know, I think what a lot of people 
forget is that, you know, we're just as frustrated here in the city as the general citizenry when it comes to projects. You know, you drive by and you see, man, they jumped right in and they got started on the city park. And we've removed a lot of trees, which is going to really beautify that park eventually. You see what's been done over at the baseball and softball fields. Got it all cleaned out, ready to go. And then, (coughs) boom, we get hit with all of this, just this inundation of rain and makes it a big muddy mess. So it's like you could see it going and then all of a sudden the brakes get hit and then you're like, man, I want them to get started again. Yeah, so in those particular things, this is the way I look at it. You can only control the things you can control, and I can control myself, right? So I can't control those factors or variables that come into play on those ball fields or at City Park. But what I can do is there's other things in the city. In the meantime, I I feel like – I feel like the good Lord takes care of those things, and in his time we'll be able to get back to work, but then I turn my focus on other things. If I can't do something here, if this can't be pushed or this project can't be pushed, there's plenty of projects for Jake Wyndham to be working on in the meantime. And truthfully, we have a, a – a general contractor out there that knows much more about that than I do. And when it's time to work, he's going to make sure he gets it done. And we feel like that he has a a good commitment to the city of Pearl uh, to to carry out the vision of what we have, not only for what I've had uh, for the Parks and Rec program, but what what our people actually need, what we need to give our people in our city. We need to compete, and we need to provide the same type of services that other cities around us uh, already do but what's heartening i think for all of our residents and uh anybody that visits pearl is that you can now start to see the vision taking place again because you can see what's going to be happening at the city park you can see what's going to be happening uh at parks and rec you can see that many areas of the city have been repaved that we're doing work on those roads that yeah we haven't been able to finish all those projects yet but you know it, it hasn't just been lip service that you say it's coming it's coming it's coming you see actual th- dirt moving and asphalt being torn up to to make replacements. Yeah. And <clears throat> when when you set out on these capital projects like this, uh, one thing that you can't determine is, uh, number one, sometimes there's there's a, a financial burden that gets placed. So you go into a subdivision and then you have um, um, an enormous amount of base repair, which takes down the timeline in order to get. But you want to repair the road right. Uh, what's the old saying? Do it right, do it light, do it wrong, do it long. <laughs> and you can put uh, you can put new asphalt on a road, but if you don't repair what's under it, then it's going to cause a problem a year or two later. So we don't want to do that. Uh, quality of work goes much more uh, in line of doing the things that need to be done appropriately for appropriately for citizens. I think too many times in government that um, you know there's a band aid placed on things, and so when when we provide these services that our citizens pay for hey let's put a good product with it and um in october as far as the paving goes october comes in it's raining november comes in it's it's 21 degrees <laughs> and they don't sell asphalt when it's not 50 degrees and, and raining it was raining, and raining i'm sorry yeah. so i don't want to make excuses <laughs> no it's not here, here's the thing I, what's what's the saying don't uh don't blame complain or defend right right uh, and so that's not it. But I do think that there is a reasonable explanation on some of these projects that does put us behind. But I'm, I'm chomping at the bits for spring, dry season to come up, summer to get here. I'm not wishing a drought, but I hope we have a, a, an ordinary summer uh, where it's, we have a good dry season where we can get a lot of things done. When you see a dry season, that means your citizens are going to have more things done for them. And that's what's important to me. You know, one of the things that, you know, if unless you're at the board meetings, uh, sometimes you, you don't get a lot of the details. I myself was shocked to find out that in a lot of areas where you went in to do the, the base repair of these streets, that when they dug them up, that it wasn't a level ground. You know, to, to hear that when contractors went in, um, not talking about any, any specifically, but there are areas of this city where when builders came in and did the roads, when when we dug them up, my goodness, there were nothing but logs and junk and everything else underneath, and it wasn't done the right way the first time, which is now falling upon you guys to be able to have to dig out all these giant logs and everything and re-smooth the, the road surface. Yeah, so, you know, you see that kind of stuff, that shabby workmanship, and look, you got they got to put their name behind that. I wouldn't be a part of that personally, but uh, so we go in there and we see the problem, and what we look at it and we, we know we have a problem good that means we can get better good we can we can repair something 
So we don't we don't stand around and scratch our head and wonder what we're going to do or we we're perplexed. We say, look, we got an issue. Let's take care of business. And so we do. Um, and that's why that, it may take a little longer. That's right. So it does go on a time frame. However, some of the things that we're doing though, like we're working with engineers to establish um, uh, standards in our roads, which that's never been done before. Something that would be um, probably some of the same standards that we see cities around us what certain type of rock so many inches to make sure it's in there when we do the uh, roll test things of that nature things that need to be done to protect the city when jake is uh, dead and gone and these city streets and somebody said well uh, these standards they did it right and they were trying to take care of their people and that's what that's the goal here look when i ran for office it was number one to make the city better uh, cause you have wonderful people here and, uh, to compete with what we're doing around us, but just do things right, provide a high quality work product. And when I leave here, um, which will be a while, Lord willing, I need, Lord go, willing, I need another yes. term. That's right. I'm going to say, we uh, never know. you never know. I don't assume anything, but when I leave here, I want to be able to say, look, I left it in better hands. And that's and then what, what, you know, how I receive it. That's what every, I mean, every mayor probably before me felt the same way, but, um, um, you know, the last couple of years, we've tried to be very extreme about delivering um, a product that our people can be proud of. And, you know, there's times that we we um, we might let people down, and, I, and I'm aware of that, but it's not ever on purpose. We don't wake up in the morning and say, hey, we're just going to be lazy. <laughs> um, it's just volume. And I think the true measure of any organization is if you do have a setback is how you respond to that setback. If you just – uh, continue to let something that's dysfunctional continue, then you got a leadership problem. But if your leader goes into that and you handle that dysfunction, you, whether you have to have your hat in your hand or, or whatever, you go out and you take care of business and you provide um, customer service basically to that person or individuals or it might be a company, then I think that says uh, what you're made of. And we want to represent ourselves well, and that's what we're trying to do uh, each and every day here at, here at the City of Pearl. Well, one of the hot topics among residents uh, of late and has been for a, a long time, actually, are are the water bills uh, here in the city. People, you know, d- just don't quite understand sometimes when they may see a big jump on their bill uh, for month to month. Now, one of the things that I do understand as I research this before uh, bringing you in here is make sure for residents, you know, make sure you're not carrying a past due balance uh, that may that will carry over and all of a sudden you'll see a higher bill if you haven't paid last month it may not be counted towards that but on the flip side of that sometimes there are some very uh, legitimate reasons why a water bill may jump uh, because of a leak and then you have to determine let the city know right right and here's the other thing this is what from my experience because i've had it done um have it even at my own residence where your water bill goes up there's no explanation for it. Don't think that you can look at something with the naked eye and know that you have a leak. Is even the slow process, whether it be a leaky faucet or a toilet or something or a faucet outside, um, you know those things uh, typically they're slow, but they make a tremendous difference on on a water bill. So make sure that those things are are checked. Um, and if you're not experienced with it, it's worth a service call. If you have something, we have what we call a potential leak list. And we can tell through our system if 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 your water bill is higher than what it needs to be. So if it's one of those situations where it's not a past due uh, issue or uh, you've seen inflated water bills, give us a call. We'll, we'll be more than happy to look at the look at the account and say, okay, there's a potential leak here. You might need to get a plumber out there just to identify it. Uh, the plumber might cost you some money on the service call, but it pays dividends down the road. And, you know, there's several different things on our water bill. You have the water rate, which is based off consumption, um, which is done in cubic. And then also you have a sewer rate, which is our sewer rate uh, for in-house in order to repair infrastructure. We have infrastructure things that we have to repair. Um, And that's based on consumption as well. Your West Rankin part is based on consumption. But here's the thing that I Well, that's the thing. When we talk about West Rankin, that is that WR Right. At the bottom of your bill. So when you look down, it's the very last thing is that WR. So currently, the city of Pearl pays the city of Jackson $3.2 million a year to treat their sewer. And these are 
EPA regs that we have to comply with to have sewer treatment. Um, it's very expensive. Now, right uh, currently, we have a sewer treatment plant through the West Rankin Utility Authority that's being constructed in Richland. Uh, we will no longer have to depend on the city of Jackson for our sewer treatment. Um, and we're building the plant for $92 million. And that sounds like a lot, but we thought it was going to come in at 135. However, say the city of Pearl wanted to stay with the city of Jackson. Um, the consent decree from the EPA for the city of Jackson is 150 million. So our cost share would be 150 million that we'd have to pay. And there would be a rate increase. Uh, so I think from a standpoint of having this sewer treatment plant, uh, Rankin County being sovereign, uh, controlling their destiny, they're going to double the size of capacity. It's going to be 20 MGDs. Uh, we're going to be able to substantiate any type of growth in Rankin County. And um, Bruce Stevens, the director there at the West Rankin Utility Authority, does an outstanding job and protects the city of Brandon, city of Pearl, city of Flowood, Pearl River, Pearl River Valley. Also, Whitfield's on that, and the airport is in that utility authority. So we, we share that cost together. Uh, I think that uh, some – Another thing that that utility authority is able to do is give us a discounted price on a garbage pickup. We don't go out to bid or RFPs on a garbage or garbage pickup just through the city of Pearl. We do it collectively as a utility authority so you have much more volume uh, to be able to present, which provides cost savings for us. So everybody sharing in this treatment plant, we're not we're not alone. Everybody shares in this uh, when we have our garbage picked up and <clears throat> In the future, it's going to be a really good thing for us to be able to have our, our own uh, treatment center. Infrastructure in those areas, water, sewer, are extremely, extremely expensive. Uh, I was very shocked when, when I became mayor, and I, I just I didn't have that background uh, in my life to know what those type of things cost, but I, I do now, and I pay attention to it uh, each and every day as we have engineering fees and things of that nature that we have to take care of in the city. Well, and I will say out there to to all of the residents, we have probably some of the most knowledgeable and nicest people working over at Public Works in our water department. If you ever have a question, you know, feel free to pick up the phone and uh, call those folks because they will come out and they will take a look at your property to look for a leak. Uh, it's a little bit harder these days because sometimes you could look for a soft spot in your lawn, but everything is soft right now. So it's a, yeah. it, it's a little more difficult to find, but Please give them a call, um, certainly before you want to start uh, you know, raising red flags. Check with them first. All right, as we finish up, I want to talk about uh, Pearl Day because tickets went on sale this week for Mr. Jamie Johnson, Frank Foster, and Zach Bridges. Uh, May 1st, uh, Friday night, uh, it'll all start at 5.30 when the gates open. We'll see Zach open, then uh, we'll have Frank, and then... Man, then a guy that everybody's talking about having Jamie take the stage. That's this is going to be some kind of show. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of buzz out there, and again, you know, we just wanted to have a fun event uh, for our people in the city of Pearl uh, when we approach Pearl Day this year. I think that it's going to bring a lot of people from out of town. Naturally, we've had people contact us all over, the, you know, in the immediate southeast, like Louisiana, Alabama, things of that nature. So I think we're going to have a, a very good crowd and. You know, our thought process behind it when we started planning Pearl Day was um, last year with Lauren Daigle, it was just hard to recreate something that was a perfect storm. When, she, when we actually signed a contract with her, she was on the rise. And a lot of times you don't get that. And uh, we were able to do so. Uh, and um, she came in, and I think the ticket audit was like 10038 It was the largest outdoor show she had ever put on uh, during as at, far that as her, at, at that time during her career. So <clears throat> trying to recreate that was going to be very tough for our people. And I thought, well, what's a, what's a good name that we can come out? We know provides good entertainment. And so we started mixing it up. You know, Jamie has his certain way of doing things, but has some wonderful songs, very good songwriter. Frank Foster, he's a, a, an original guy and, and uh, likes to do things himself and, I have a lot of people that I know that uh, is a big fan of Frank Foster and then our very own Zach Bridges. So combining these things, we kind of give different looks. It's all country music, but we give different looks to different performers. And so that way I think we could fit people's different styles. I mean, they like different 
different type of country music singers and and i think all three of these men have have different styles and uh they're gonna put on one heck of a show i'm looking forward to it and come on out and hang out with us and have a good time it's going to be a, a great 47th uh birthday party uh for the the great city of pearl uh all tickets can be purchased this year uh, a little bit differently than than in years past all of it right now is going to go through online through Ticketmaster. yeah it is and we we felt like that sometimes when you send different messages online and then in person uh it can it can make things complicated so it's it's a little bit it's easier on the city forces, all right? So you, you take in consideration that you have people doing their everyday jobs here. And we have it online, then it can streamline the process. And um, also, we can keep up with our numbers better that way. And quite frankly, uh, it, we're not handling all this cash on hand, which is safer as well. I think that's a, that's a better way to go. Uh, from a security standpoint. So with those factors playing into it, we thought it was a no-brainer just to go that route. And, and really and truly everything's online these days anyway everybody's used to operating that way and uh, so we wanted to make it very convenient for people to come to this concert and uh, i think the price is is right and and you know when we do these concerts i don't know if people realize it or not we we don't go into the situation where we're trying to knock down cash we're trying to cover costs let me tell you something for as a novice 25 dollars for a show like you're going to be able to see here um you know, no offense to our friends to the east, but you're not getting a twenty-five dollar ticket to see an artist uh, in the city next door. But you can here. Yeah, and, and what we're trying to do is make it affordable for families, and I think that's important. I mean, uh, you have a mom and dad that work hard all week, and they want to go out and they want to take their kids to a concert like this. Then it's going to be an affordable venue, and you're seeing, uh, well, we know two superstars and one on the rise, right? And um, that's very exciting. One day we won't be able to afford Zach. That's right. That's, <laughs> and, and that's what we hope. That's yeah. what we want. I mean, that's the thing that and, – and we want him to succeed, and we're glad that he's a part of that. Um, he's been a very, very um, – I wouldn't say – I guess he's been out in the public so much uh, here in the last year, and I'm, I'm very happy for him. He's a great guy. Come great ambassador great for our city. He, he certainly is, and so we're very proud of him. Matter of fact, at the um, Pearl Chamber Commerce Banquet just last Thursday, he performed, man. He he really put on a show, and everybody enjoyed it. We had a great time, and that's what it's about. You know, we, we talk about business all day, but it's also in a community. It's about coming out and having fun with one another, building relationships. And, you know, my overall goal was just to make um, – I don't want to – I don't want to talk Donald Trump. I just want to make Pearl great. And so on top of that, being great, we can talk about the uh, in the weed things. I mean, there's engineering costs, infrastructure needs, things of that nature. But we also want to have a, uh, a camaraderie in the city where we're, we're friends and we have a good time. We know We know how to work. We know how to play. And I think that goes along with having a complete city. That is Mayor Jake Windham. Uh, he'll be joining us uh, here from time to time here on – this week in Pearl, uh, if you have a question for the mayor, you know, this is a great avenue. Uh, he's graciously uh, said that he'll answer some of your questions uh, every week. So if you want to email those in, uh, send them to me, uh, gflynn at cityofpearl.com. That's gflynn at cityofpearl.com. You can even post it on the City of Pearl uh, website and, or ask it on our website or on our Facebook or Twitter uh, accounts. We will be more than happy to get those questions to the mayor, and he'll answer them right here for you on the show. So a, a great level of transparency here in the city. Mayor, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thank you, Greg. I appreciate right. your time. Hey, when we come back, we'll be looking in at what's going on up at the state legislature with our senator, Dean Kirby, and our representative, Mr. Gene Newman. So stay right there. This Week in Pearl continues right after this. Hello, I'm Mayor Wyndham, and I'm thrilled to show you the city creating its own future. Pearl is located in Rankin County, the fastest growing county in Mississippi, and there's no question why. Access to great schools, even better shopping, and unbridled beauty make Pearl a town that truly embodies its name. And with a truly exceptional team of first responders, public safety is another key component of our success. With fantastic housing opportunities from quaint suburban neighborhoods to gorgeous lakefront properties, there's a place for you here in Pearl. 
You can't beat the location. Right outside of Pearl is the crossroads of the south, where Interstate 20 meets Interstate 55. From here, you can travel anywhere within the state or the country. Or you can choose to stay right here in Pearl to enjoy a Mississippi Braves baseball game or experience the small town atmosphere, community pride, and heart of the local residents. Well, welcome back into This Week in Pearl. We're going to turn our attention now to the state legislature uh, next two segments, but uh, we're going to start off with the senior statesman as we have with us. We are blessed to have the Senate pro tem, Senator Dean Kirby from the great city of Pearl. Senator, how are you? Uh, busy. We're, we're, <laughs> having fun. Uh, you know, we've been there, what, three weeks now, I guess, uh, three or four. And anyway, it's gone by so quickly. Uh, it, it's been real, real busy organizational uh, management type position and uh, by the way I'm, I'm very honored and very appreciative of being the uh, pro tem it's uh, something I really didn't think I'd ever have and uh, it's known as the senator senator and uh, and I've been trying to help the senators that's what I've been trying to do I really haven't had time to concentrate on any legislation for myself you know I've been helping them with theirs so meeting a lot with the lieutenant governors some agency heads and everything else so it's it's been really busy i'm i'm having fun though so you call it being the uh the senator's senator um you know kind of explain that to folks because that's outside of your you know what you're used to doing yes because again it's it, it sounds like you're kind of like the tutor <laughs> in, in a lot of ways i am and uh, a lot of ways i'm being tutored too because it's a new position for me but uh yeah the the pro tem is elected by the senators and so uh, it's it's uh, the senator senator because they elect that person and that person's job is to help the senators anytime they need any help in any way and be the kind of the middleman between the lieutenant governor and and the senator so uh, to help them in any way that I can to help the lieutenant governor in any way that I can I help him in, in helping uh, secure votes on important matters. And then I help the senators by talking to the lieutenant governor and convincing him that this is a good bill. So, uh, so I'm kind of in between guy, you know, the middleman, I guess. The uh, negotiator, I like that. The, the <laughs> I guess I hadn't thought about it that way, but I I, I do enjoy it. Uh, what I like best about, of course, what I like best about it is just the fact that I pretty much know everything that's going on, uh, or as much as or more than most as to what's going on. Uh, but it's it's a lot of fun. It's very, very busy. That's well, you know, I tell you, they, uh, they're not giving you a whole lot of time to wade into the shallow end this session. Uh, what looked like it, oh, it might have been quiet. Hey, let's just new governor, new lieutenant governor. Let's just kind of ease our way in, see what we're going to do this year. Yes. And then bing, bang, boom, you're hit with uh, Department of Corrections. Uh, well, that's true. Uh, the Department of Corrections, we were not expecting. There's a little hot issue every year, and we've already had two. So, uh, and, and I hope we don't have any more like that. Uh, but uh, Human Services and Department of Correction, both. It's been a little uh, surprise to, to all of us. Well, for the, the public out there, you know, what can you tell us from your understanding? You know, where are we going to go next? Where have we been with uh mdoc um because it seems like it you know it's gaining national attention now it is getting national attention and, and of course a lot of what we read and hear a lot of it's true and a lot of it isn't sure so um well first off building number 29 in parchment you know parchment's like over 100 years old and some of those buildings are very old and and 29 was one that that really needed a lot of work on it and I think that was part of the problem, uh, that people felt like they were not in sanitary, safe environments. And uh, when you put 20 prisoners in one room, a type deal, and uh, no one's happy to be there. So uh, it, 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 gets, uh, it gets a little restless, I guess you could say, at times. So, uh, and then when, you're, when you're, the toilets don't work, the laboratories don't work, those type things, you—, you the laboratories are torn off the wall because someone gets mad. Well, then the others get mad if that guy for tearing off the wall type deal. So, anyway, it's um, you know, we're we're separating, we're moving uh, people to different prisons. Uh, we're trying to identify uh, 
you know, who are the troublemakers. Uh, we're separating them out, moving them to different places. Uh, we're looking at Walnut Grove, uh, reopening that, moving some of the criminals there, putting them in secure sales. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just a lot going on right now. Uh, well, you know, part of the problem, uh, of course, you have convicts to begin with. But then we also have some guards that are paid like minimum wage. That's part of a problem. Uh, so, you know, we've got to hire good people and train them well. And uh, then I think a lot of our problems will be solved. And the only way you're going to get those people is to get to pay up. You know, and, and I think that, you know, everybody understands that it's not meant to be a country club. But, you know, I've been to Parchman myself, uh, witnessed an execution there. Uh, it's time, I think, that at least be updated uh, That's right. to the year 2020. I, I, I agree 100%. Now, let me say this. We have some really nice, good professional people also working there. They're not – I mean, everyone's not minimum wage. It's just a lot of our guards are. Uh, so – but I, I think I think we've identified some of the problems, and I think we're going to correct those. No, I don't think – I know we're going to correct those. You know, it's just unfortunate that sometimes it takes a bad situation or a bad event to really shine a light on. Because you guys have known over the years up there at the legislature that there's been problems. But, you know, they were just getting by and, okay, everything was just moving along. But then it just – sometimes it takes a powder keg, doesn't it? Well, it does. And I I think as we check into it more, we're we're spending a lot of money in corrections. But I think maybe some of it was not spent in the right direction. I think – you know – we're going to make sure that things are properly done. Let's put it that way. And we're on top of it. I, I mean, uh, seriously, the the governor and the lieutenant governor, the speaker, and the chairman of corrections on the House and Senate side, I think it's called penitentiaries on the House side, corrections on our side. Uh, I mean, they're, they've all been to Parchment. They've been to these other prisons. They've talked to several people that work there. They know, they've identified the problems, and we're going to correct it. Boy, let me tell you, it came like a uh, big shockwave when the Department of Human Services, Shad White, the state auditor, came down with his uh, findings of an investigation. Uh, Man, that just hit like a shockwave for alleged misuse of uh, up to $4 million, maybe more, of uh, federal funds, state funds. Uh, I know that it's still an ongoing, evolving situation for you, but, you know, what do you understand from that? Are you talking about from Department of Corrections? Or no, I'm from, sorry, Department of Human, Human Services. Human Services, yes. Sir. yes. Uh, I think it may be more than that, what we're hearing. So, yes, it's, uh, it was a shocker that we all just found out about. Uh, no one had any idea. Uh, I didn't even know an investigation was going on, and I don't think uh, maybe the governor, lieutenant governor, or speaker knew it was going on. Uh, he kept it really, really quiet. And uh, I will say, though, that that – some people knew that it was a problem in corrections and in human services. And my understanding is there, there was already been someone had already requested a peer review. So some, I think some people might have thought there might have been some mishandling of funds. Now, I don't believe everything I read in the paper uh, because I've read things about myself that weren't true. <laughs> and some of them, uh, you know, I, I remember the – and I won't name the reporter, but I remember the first time I got elected – the the next morning i read the paper and i made a fantastic quote unfortunately i wasn't the one that made the quote the reporter did and he's i called him i said please don't quote me again unless you talk to me and his his answer was well i knew that's about what you would say and and i would have said and i told him i said no i would have never said anything that you know that intelligent that it was way beyond me so but thank you very much but don't do it again type deal well as a so. public servant you know you've served your most of your adult life here has been in, in public service and you know it's for you personally when you see a story like this of people that have allegedly uh, abused the public trust and certainly funds that were uh, meant for some of our most vulnerable uh, citizens, you know, where does that sit with you? Well, not well. And, and, and especially when you know these people personally and consider some of them friends and then that happens and, and you're just shocked and can't believe that, that they've really done that. And, uh, and we'll see how it turns out. And, and, uh, you know, so many times they, they, the, the press, especially they'll make it look like that they're in it uh, for personal gain and a lot of times it's not a lot of times it's it's misusing money 
putting it in one department when it should have gone to another. Yeah, uh, and but yet, if you get grants or, or you know any type of money from the federal government, uh, and it's for a specific purpose, that's where it's supposed to go. And then when they put it somewhere else, then it's mishandling of funds, and that makes it look like when you say mishandling of funds, like they personally profited and a lot of times they don't well in this case what shed uh, the auditor state auditor shed white has put out at least thus far in the indictments you know the fact that uh, the news have apparently used funds uh, to millions of dollars to invest in pharmaceutical and medical supplies down yeah. in florida i mean that certainly sounds unfortunately like that was well, you, personal I, benefit I, I agree if, if all of that's true and i'm sure that it must be or he wouldn't have put it out but uh i, I like I, say, I don't know enough about it to comment at this time and don't want to accuse anything of anyone until all the facts are out but that one that one does sound strange uh, you're exactly right well hopefully we can put you know these two behind you all uh in the near future get us on the right road and then you know really the the main job that you all are there for you can get down to the business of appropriations you've got to set the budget that's right that's right we uh, and we are working and we've got some really good chairman i think the lieutenant governor did a really good job on his uh, appointing a chairman and vice chairman of various committees and uh, on as far as appropriations Briggs Hobson uh, is the new chairman, and Briggs was uh, uh, vice chairman for the last eight years, and he knows it. He, he, he's an attorney. He's very, very intelligent, and I, I feel really good that uh, with you know working with Briggs and he working with the lieutenant governor as well as working with the budget office, he's going to do a good job. I feel good about that. You know, we've already passed the teacher pay raise, as you know, this year and sent it now to the house. I know our Pearl folks are very excited about that. And you know, the amazing thing, (laughs) people started holding their hands to be named as co-authors. And finally the Lieutenant governor says, does anyone not wish to be a co-author on this bill? So we have 52 signatures on that teacher pay raise. So that tells you where our heart is. Uh, and, and we realize that we like I say we gave a raise last year, we're giving a raise this year. We're going to give another raise. All intentions, if the world, you know, if the creek doesn't rise and it is rising <laughs> right now, uh, we're going to give another one next year. So I feel real good about it. And and not just teacher pay raise, but we're looking at a lot of things. Hopefully, that'll help teachers and, and administrators as well. Well, it's a, uh, a a rosy future because I know that uh, we've actually got increased revenue we may have a little bit more to to work with this year we do what we have to be careful though we have to be very careful with that surplus because if you start spending it on things like teacher pay raise that's a recurring expense and once that surplus is gone then what are you going to do you know so we have to be very careful to make sure that our uh, revenue estimates are not something that uh you know that will be depleted in a couple of years. In other words, if you, for some reason, we have an influx of, because of a lawsuit or whatever and get a lot of money, we, you know, we can't use that on recurring expenses. Uh, a lot of people don't really understand that, but that's not something we're going to have every year. So what do you do then? You're, you're, you know, first off, we have to, we're not like Washington. We balance our budget every year. So we have to do revenue estimates, and our revenue estimates right now are really up, and our surplus is up. And about first, probably first or second week of March, we'll have a revised budget, and that's based on uh, you know on the revenue at that time. So uh, I feel real good about it, and why the economy is so good. <laughs> You know, I don't know, but I'm very thankful. Absolutely. I've been on the downside of that as well, and where you have to let state employees go and you start cutting back numbers. Uh, You know, someone has made the statement in the past, as far as uh, appropriations, it's a lot easier when you don't have money. Because then people aren't always saying, we know you got this surplus and we got to have this. And everyone right now is coming in with their handout. So, And I understand that we have some really, really hard basic needs that aren't being met right now in this state and we need to do it roads and bridges one of them well i certainly uh feel as though we are in good hands with conservative uh fiscal leadership in you know speaker gunn over in the house certainly lieutenant governor and yourself uh it's just it's it makes us feel good well thank you you know of course in the senate uh being pro tem hopefully will help the city of pearl and rankin county and i hope i can help the whole state uh, but in addition to that, we got uh, you know we got uh, Josh Harkins now as chairman of finance, uh, so he'll be doing the bond bills and tax bills and those type things, and 
Uh, Josh is a great guy, lives out the reservoir, and uh, we're excited to have Josh there. And in addition to that, we've got Chris Kaufman, who actually lives in Mendenhall, but he has some of the southern tip of Rankin County. He's got uh, Florence and part of Richland and on over toward Puckett. Uh, uh, Chris Kaufman's a great guy. We're really lucky to have him there. And then I feel real good about the House members, too, because we've got some really good guys there, all of them. I mean, every one of them. Uh, you know, Tom Weathersby is the old man of the group. He came the same time I did. Uh, but Tom's over uh, public buildings, I think. But uh, And, of course, all of, I can name all of them because they're all good. But we're excited. Of course, you know, we were blessed for so many years to have Ray Rogers. And Ray was did a great job, but we're really, really blessed to have Gene Newman. I'm telling you, Gene's going to be a great one. And uh, he, he, Gene's a little different in the fact that he lobbied and worked with and some senators and House members. So he's got a relationship not only in the House, so he's got a head start on all, all these other freshmen because everyone knows him uh, or most know him. The new ones, of course, didn't, I don't think. Uh, but he also has a good relationship in the Senate. So once he gets a bill passed there, then maybe Josh and Chris and I can help him get it passed in the House, too. So having the positions that we have on both sides, uh, we should be able to do some good things for our area. Well, he is Senator Dean Kirby, the pro tem of the Mississippi Senate. And just a little preview, we've got Mr. Gene Newman coming up next. So well, that's we'll, great. We'll, we'll, uh, like I say, we're excited to have Gene. He's, he's already a great uh, legislator and hadn't been there but three weeks. Well, Senator, thank you for taking the time, and we will uh, talk to you again soon. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be back right after this. Hello, I'm Mayor Wyndham, and I'm thrilled to show you the city creating its own future. Pearl is located in Rankin County, the fastest growing county in Mississippi, and there's no question why. Access to great schools, even better shopping, and unbridled beauty make Pearl a town that truly embodies its name. And with a truly exceptional team of first responders, public safety is another key component of our success. With fantastic housing opportunities from quaint suburban neighborhoods to gorgeous lakefront properties, there's a place for you here in Pearl. You can't beat the location. Right outside of Pearl is the crossroads of the south where Interstate 20 meets Interstate 55. From here you can travel anywhere within the state or the country. Or you can choose to stay right here in Pearl to enjoy a Mississippi Braves baseball game or experience the small town atmosphere, community pride, and heart of the local residents. Back here on This Week in Pearl, we are continuing our talk in the legislature. We're going to move from the Senate over into the House, and we are going to bring in Representative Gene Newman, who, uh, freshman. The freshman up there. It's been a long time since you've been called a freshman. It's been a very long time since I was a freshman. <laughs> it is. Uh, a, it's been a daunting task for you. Uh, you probably you knew that it would be as you try and step in for the great Ray Rogers, who uh, retired after so many great years of service. Um, you know, initially, how's it been these first couple of weeks? It's it's been real good. It's been it's been like I expected it. You know, the first two or three weeks is a lot of pomp and circumstance. Everybody gets sworn in, and you got the governor's foo rah rise and all, all that going on so you know the first two or three weeks is is uh is like i say a lot of pomp and circumstance and the uh, lieutenant governor got got to work real fast when he came out of the gate pointing committees and going the house is uh, a little bit more difficult for the speaker I, I i don't know that i'd ever want the speaker's job after what after watching exactly what they have to do and learning actually the rules that's required for him to fulfill to be able to appoint committees because you know the, the the way the rules are set up members with seniority get get certain rights to certain committees and and uh, then but everybody has certain rights to certain committees you know their their choices of committees uh but i you know i can't imagine you know if you move one person all these dominoes fall uh and and shifts everything's around I, I know they had you know they they had the same issue in the senate to some degree but they just don't have the rules that that uh, our speaker has to deal with so uh but he he got these we've got the committees together we all all done all the organization of the committees in other words you have to go in and um uh, like to elect set the rules for the committee elect a secretary uh i was elected secretary on the uh uh public uh, on the military affairs committee and in and in uh like i'm the i'm a subcommittee chair on on public property and and uh you know they they brought the uh 
Judd B up into subcommittees this time, which has not been done in a long time. New Chairman Nick Bain has has uh, rearranged the committee, and it, it's it's a uh, it's more like it used to be in terms of all the subcommittees that we're doing. So it'll, I think it'll be a lot better. Well, the uh, committees that you've been assigned to, uh, very, very impressive. Uh, apportionment and elections, banking and financial services, insurance, Judiciary B, Judiciary and Bank, military affairs, and public property. Now, I know that Judiciary B is one that you were really hoping that you would be uh, placed on because it does have some – um, power that goes along with it. You you really deal with some important issues there in Judiciary B. That's right. J- Judd B handles well. It normally handles anything to do with a criminal criminal justice issue. Uh, like uh, we'll have a Judd B meeting tomorrow morning, and then tomorrow after we already had a a, a committee meeting on vaping and the problems that that's causing, uh, or a hearing on vaping. We'll we'll have a hearing tomorrow afternoon uh, on on uh, corrections. So and that'll be a a uh, joint uh, hearing with correction the corrections committee. So both both uh, uh, those meetings will both of those committees will be in that hearing and and uh, that that will you know that's just a start. We got we got to figure out where where we're going to be able to go somewhere with that. Well, you know your your background not only being on Judiciary B now you know your background serving for people around here know. Uh, you know, most known for your bail bondsmanship, uh, very close to the criminal justice system for many years. Uh, that just had to have hit like a bombshell to you when we saw what was going on up at Parchman. And, uh, man, that's a mess. It is. It's, and it's been a mess for a long time. It's, uh, you know, if you just look at the history of corrections, I mean, you go all the way back to the when, when Mississippi was founded, uh, down at Fort Rosalie, the the uh, the first problem that they had was building a a, a prison system or building a jail, and uh, that nobody would fund it. So, the uh, fort commander finally got the prisoners out there and 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 used them to build a jail. So that that's you know that's the way we've always done things, and nobody wants to fund it. That's nobody wants to spend money on on corrections, but nobody wants to deal with the crime either. So. Uh, it's a, it's a two edged sword and and uh, one that 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 uh, we got hired to deal with and we have to figure out how to deal with it the best way we can. Well, coming at it from you know private sector now into the public uh, sector, how are you gonna you know what kind of vision can you bring in from what you've seen from the outside? Because sometimes it you know once you get inside of government, y- you lose kind of I don't want to say uh, sense, but y- you look at things <laughs> through a tunnel tunnel vision because it's the way things have always been done but out in the private sector sometimes you see the the different avenues that can be taken well you know the one the one thing that i can tell you is i i i knew the former chairman of corrections uh from up to soda county he he he, he's actually moved down to wildlife now but uh he he i shouldn't say down to wildlife he's moved over to wildlife over yeah uh he he's uh i mean he had a real good handle on on how it worked uh Corrections is is uh, it's not easy because you're dealing with you're not just dealing with what we need to do as a state. You're dealing with what the federal government requires you to do, and and uh, to 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 treat you know you want to treat people humanely, but at the same time, uh, you, you know you 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 got to keep them locked up because of what they've done wrong. You always have to remember that they're not there because it's fun. They're there because they did something wrong. Uh, that don't mean you mistreat them as humans. I mean, you know, but so we have to figure out the best way to, 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 to treat them, to, to penalize them without mistreating them. Uh, and you know, I know that some folks have just said, well, we just need more money at it. I don't know that just throwing more money at it's the right, always the right answer. Uh, I know from a business perspective, I've, I've watched, I, well, from a business perspective, I used to belong to ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council. Well, now I belong to ALEC as a legislative member. Uh, so I'm on the other side. But at the same time, the whole purpose of the ALEC is to bring the private sector and public sector together so that we have a better understanding of the best way to make things happen, to bring to bring model legislation up, up to the to the capital so that, that we can make things happen. Uh, you know, I've watched through the years the push to go private corrections, uh, and I think that's a good idea. But it's very expensive, and and you know, sadly, it's very expensive because the the reason it costs more to put somebody in a private prison is because they pay their guards more. So you know, when you pay the guards more, you you have to have more money, and 
you get better guards. So you get you get a better product. Uh, so I don't. We we have to find the right answer for the state of Mississippi that the people are willing to pay for and that we get the right results. You know, it's it's one of those things, and I I was a part of state government, so I, I understand that. Yeah, everybody kind of thinks of throwing money at something, but no, I think that it's if you build the right culture, no matter what people are making, because when they take the job, they know how much they're going to make. If people are having pride in their work and you build the proper culture and you give them good leadership around it, that they will work for, you know, they won't complain about what they're making. Sure, they'd like to be making more, but it's putting effective leadership in to motivate people every day that could be a cheaper alternative. That's right. And, and, you know, it, it, no matter how much somebody makes, I always want to make more. Sure. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the big problems we've had at Parchman is you're in Parchman, you're in the Delta. There, there's, uh, there's not a large labor force up there, and you're, you're going to try to keep 15,000 inmates up there with a small number of people that you can draw from to hire people. You're not going to hire somebody in Jackson and get them to go to the Delta. No. That's not going to happen. So, you know, I, I think one of the things we have to look at is regionalizing, going to more regional facilities. The Delta, the Parchman Delta farm does not work anymore. It, 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 it hasn't worked since Kitty destroyed it back in the 70s. Well, that's one issue. And then I know that it's it's been kind of uh, it's just really recent with the Department of Human Services now uh, with another cloud falling over state government with a former director that was there, you know, this taking place uh, 2017, 2018, uh, early 2019, you know, is, is this kind of one of those, you worry about walking out in the public and they're like, man, does state government do anything right? Well, there's, there's bad people in every profession you come to, even, even, there's probably even bad radio announcers. Out there oh, I guarantee that. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, that bad people are going to do bad things. That's the reason we have a correction system. I mean, it's just that simple, but, but uh, the, we don't know enough yet about exactly what what's going on. I think that's that's a lot of federal money that's that's been misspent. Uh, I, I can tell you this much: Shad White, our state auditor, is the man. He's 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 as good as you can get. He's he's doing a great job, and and uh, you know we just need to turn that boy loose and let him go, uh, and recognize that he's got a lot of potential somewhere down the road. Well, and I think that there's a uh, people ought to be nervous. The, the the ones that have not been playing by the rules over these years, they need to be nervous because you have an auditor in there now that, man, he doesn't care. He's there to do the right thing, and it doesn't matter whether there's an R or a D next to your name, or whether or not you've got a huge bank account or a very small bank account. He's gonna do exactly what's right for the people. Yeah, and that's right. And and uh, you know one of the things that I like that I've learned this morning listen, listening to the radio station was that. Uh, uh, the the uh, the the uh, uh, person who who told on who ratted this guy yeah, the out, whistleblower the whistleblower is that what you want to call it yeah he the whistleblower was uh, none other than our former governor Phil Bryant I saw that and uh, finally gave him permission that you know and that's where you you really hope because you had people within human services employees that brought it forward to the governor's office that said something here just isn't right um, and then they sent it up the line and Governor Bryant. Uh, a man of great integrity uh, certainly isn't going to sit on it and pass it on forward. I just think it speaks to the leadership that we've had uh, of people that are willing to do the right thing. And now it continues with uh, Governor Reeves, uh, Lieutenant Governor Hoseman, Speaker Gunn. Uh, they're not afraid to take on controversial issues. That's right. That, that, all, all three of those guys are real leaders. Uh, you know, I, I know people have issues with, with the Governor Reeves, but, uh, you know, if you want a real conservative governor, and and he that's him that's what he is he's he's uh he's he's very tight with the physical brains but but uh he's also extremely smart and he and he he looks for ways to do things rather than just throw money at it well that uh, you could call tate reeves a lot of things and he's got his, his uh certainly his drawbacks as anybody does but you can never question whether or not he is a true conservative and if he is a fiscal conservative that is for sure <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> uh coming out of the treasurer's office yeah he he's he's uh i mean I've, I've watched him for years now uh known as daddy forever but but uh he he's he is what he is and 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 the you know the one of the things that most people don't like about him is he ain't afraid to say no <laughs> well, and you need that. Yeah, people don't like no. So, but but he's he's uh, he's he's doing a good job. Something that uh, you're looking forward to before you signy die in April. Um, you know, what are you looking forward to 
this this first session now that you're kind of in there? Well, I still have a lot to learn. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I watched the other freshmen and 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 as we we're, we're starting to do a little bit of committee work and start doing a little th- little things that that they're so wide eyed. You know, the, the speakers doing a class on rules every every Friday morning, and uh, and just to watch them in that class, they they're like they're that's amazing that how much they don't understand the process and and it gives me the the knowledge it's good for me to know in my heart that that i know all that process i've watched it through the years i understand it i understand what's going on uh so i have a little bit of edge on them but i still have a ton to learn i mean it's it's a it's a it's it's good it's good to feel like you know you i i i I know a little bit more than they do but then i watch some of the other guys and and realize that hey i still got a long way to go well we look forward to uh you know, walking with you in this uh, freshman term for you uh, as we've got this show this week in Pearl started up. So it's a great chance that both you and Senator Kirby will have to come on here and keep us updated about what's going on over in the Senate, over in the House, and, you know, kind of break it down to layman's terms because that's one thing that you guys are really, really good at. And I think it's because you're Pearl guys that you can break it down to tell people what it's about Instead of using the big government terms, you guys are are, are for the people You're telling us, <laughs> man, don't use those big 50-cent words on us. Yeah, you know, I, I, every once in a while I'll talk to some lobbyist and he'll start throwing acronyms out and, and I'll be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, tell me what you mean when you're talking to me because I don't understand the acronyms. And, and uh, But, but uh, you know, we just want to we want to we want to be straightforward and, and uh, let the folks know what's going on. And the and main thing I want to say to anybody out there. If you got an issue, please call me. My cell cell phone's on my website. It's on it's on my Facebook page. You know, pick up the phone and call me or text me. Or, you know, send me an email. Whatever 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 works best for you. You know, I'll come meet with you if you want to. But if you've got an issue, let me know. Uh, what is that website? Web my website my personal website yeah. is genehuman.ms. It's okay. real simple. It's just gene g e n e n e w m a n dot m s. Okay, that's excellent because you know a lot of times you try and call up to the Capitol and you get that main number and you may or may not get that message or you may or may not get that call. Well, most of the times we, that, you know, if you get to if you get the call to the pages, they'll 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 get it to us, and I, I'm I'm pretty sure of that. So, uh, uh, but please let them know. Just call me. And it's certainly not a problem to find you or Senator Kirby out and around the city. And I'm sure that the people take the opportunity in the grocery store. That's, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> in the restaurants to come up and say, hey, here's what I got. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say one thing. I, there's a there's something called a red flag bill about weapons, about uh, guns, taking guns away. Uh, don't worry about that. That ain't going nowhere. I, that's just, that's not going to happen. Not in, not here, not now. It's, you know, I, nobody wants that except the few real liberals that we have and i think many people need to understand as you go through the legislative process that you know there's hundreds if not thousands of bills that get filed every session and hundreds of thousands don't go any place they just get filed and then they go back into the file and then they'll try again next year that's right there'll be 2,000 to 2,500 bills filed and there'll be 200 to 250 bills that passes and i'm talking about general bills yeah. so if you're lucky, you get 200. Yeah, if, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, that's just an average. If I've, I've watched through through all these years fooling with this, I, I, I mean, that's what that's what happens. Uh, it's just not that many. You know, the, the whole system is designed to kill legislation, not pass it. All right. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. You guys continue to fight the good fight up there on the hill for us. We appreciate your time very all much. All right. He is Representative Gene Newman. We'll be back with more this week in Pearl. Right after this. Hello, I'm Mayor Wyndham, and I'm thrilled to show you the city creating its own future. Pearl is located in Rankin County, the fastest growing county in Mississippi, and there's no question why. Access to great schools, even better shopping, and unbridled beauty make Pearl a town that truly embodies its name. And with a truly exceptional team of first responders, public safety is another key component of our success. With fantastic housing opportunities from quaint suburban neighborhoods to gorgeous lakefront properties, there's a place for you here in Pearl. You can't beat the location. Right outside of Pearl is the crossroads of the south, where Interstate 20 meets Interstate 55. From here, you can travel anywhere within the state or the country. Or you can choose to stay right here in Pearl to enjoy a Mississippi Braves baseball game or experience the small town atmosphere 
community pride, and heart of the local residents. Welcome back to This Week in Pearl. I am Greg Flynn, and we are now going to head to our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., where we are blessed to be joined by our congressman. He is Michael Guest, and he is just off the floor of the House of Representatives. Congressman, how are you? I'm great, Greg. How are things back home today? Everything well? Uh, well, other than we are completely saturated and we live on a sponge right now, we're doing pretty good. Well, good. Well, uh, if uh, the Lord, good Lord is willing, I will be flying back out tomorrow and be back home and uh, get to see you all this weekend. Excellent. Well, I, I guess the first question that everybody has uh, back home here in the district is, how is the three ring circus up there on Capitol Hill? You know, I tell you, it, it has been an interesting uh, several weeks as we were there at the end of December uh, voting on impeachment and then uh, moving forward to the impeachment hearing that uh, occurred over in the Senate. Uh, we're finally, I think, beginning to uh, get over uh, all the, the 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 time and energy and effort that we spent on impeachment. And hopefully we'll be getting back to uh, actually legislating and doing the things that the people of Mississippi sent us up here to do. And so uh, as uh, we're moving from impeachment, we're starting to see things return to more sense of normalcy. Uh, But I believe that as we continue to get closer to November 2020 in the presidential election, uh, uh, we will probably see some of that same divisiveness that we saw several weeks ago return very quickly. So um, is it your belief that we can get things accomplished now, even with, you know, coming off the heels of impeachment and with an election right around the corner that we won't see the obstruction? Will you have a window to be able to do something? Uh, I, I think that's exactly right. I think we will have a window. I think uh, that between now uh, and early summer, possibly late May, early June, uh, that there will be the possibility that uh, we will be able to work together uh, on legislation uh, that will be bipartisan. And in this Congress, it must be bipartisan. Uh, the Democrats control the House of Representatives. The Senate con- is controlled by Republicans. And so if we're going to move any legislation forward uh, for things such as infrastructure, rural hospital, prescription drug pricing, those things that are important, not just to the people of Rankin County and the people of Mississippi, but are important to our nation, we must find a way to work together. Uh, but I believe that that window that we are referring to is a, for the next three or four months. And then uh, after we return back, uh, after our uh, summer recess, I think it will be very difficult to accomplish any major legislation but after from that point to the end of the year. So from your perspective, and you kind of know what's floating out there, uh, are there any infrastructure bills you're feeling, or is there a big topic that you think will get accomplished before that summer break? You know, uh, in May, we will have to take up some health care bills uh, that uh, we have kind of uh, extended some different deadlines uh, for for some health care legislation into May. And so uh, I'm hopeful that uh, as we get into those health care bills, that there will be bills that will deal with things such as surprise billing, uh, prescription drug calls, uh, rural health care, which is so uh, important to the people of Mississippi. Uh, as far as infrastructure, uh, we keep hearing uh, rumors uh, that there are ongoing talks about infrastructure. We have not seen anything firm, anything concrete, uh, but I believe that that would be important uh, to the people of Pearl, the people of central Mississippi, uh, talking about roads and bridges and water and sewage and things such as rural broadband. Those are important, uh, again, not just to our state, but to people uh, across the country. And so I am hopeful that we will take advantage of this window of opportunity and get some important legislation passed uh, before the summer arrives. You know, with the Mississippi delegation up there, such a a strong congressional delegation, uh, both in the House and in the Senate, you guys have to walk around up there with your with your chests out because, you know, Mississippi is doing pretty darn good. And the rest of the country could learn a few things about how we're doing things here, couldn't they? Well, there's no doubt, and and, and you're exactly right. We've got a great delegation in the House, Stephen Palazzo, Trent Kelly. Uh, We even work very closely with Minnie Thompson on issues that affect the state of Mississippi. You have uh, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith, Senator Wicker um, over in the Senate, and so we are blessed uh, to have a delegation uh, that works well together, and you're exactly right. Mississippi has things to be proud of. You know, I often tout, you know, economic development. Uh, you're talking about Pearl. You know, we've seen over the years uh, Bass Pro, uh, the outlet malls there, uh, the Bray Stadium uh, and, and Flowood. Uh, you see uh, the, the mall and all of the retail shopping that Flowood has. Uh, Brandon has the amphitheater. Uh, I believe that Richland and Florence are poised for growth once you complete uh, Interstate or excuse me, Highway 49. 
Uh, you look at companies like Nissan and Continental Tire and Toyota. You've got C Spire based there uh, in the metro area. You've got Ingalls uh, down the coast. Uh, you've got Raytheon over in Forest. So there are some incredible things, I believe, that are going on uh, in Mississippi. Uh, and back home in Rankin County, you know, Rankin County is home to, school, to, to two A-rated school districts, the, the Pearl uh, School District as well as Rankin County. And so um, not just the, the state itself, uh, but but Rankin County, which is where I'm uh, from, uh, where I choose to call home, where I raise my family, I'm very proud of the things that are happening in Rankin County. Well, you know, I wasn't. You said that that you, uh, you know, you call Rankin County home. You are a Brandon Bulldog, but we absolutely still love you here in Pearl. We just want you to know that. Well, thank you, and, and, and I love Pearl. Um, you know, uh, I tell everybody that uh, I root for Pearl 364 days out of the year. There's just one day out of the year uh, that, that I root against the Pearl Pirates, uh, but uh, but uh, it's it, it, it's all uh, in good fun. You know, but, but you know, the, the great thing is, you know, having been a district attorney in Rankin County for almost 25 years, I have developed some great relationships, including with your mayor, Jake Wyndham. Uh, the first case, Greg, that I tried after being elected, served a dozen years as assistant DA, but the first case I tried after being elected as DA uh, was a case in which Jake Wyndham was shot in the line of duty. He yeah. was over in Pearl. He was executing a search warrant on a home uh, that had some stolen property. Uh, Jake was actually on the SWAT team, the SRT team. He was uh, the individual who was manning the ram. Uh, and so um, after Pearl uh, knocked and announced that they were going to be entering the residence, uh, there was no answer. Uh, Jake then uh, took the ram to, uh, to make forced entry in the home. Uh, when he did, his momentum carried him into the home. And, and uh, Jake was met with gunfire. Uh, Jake was shot in the vest, shot in the knee, uh, and then the Pearl Police officers were able to come in behind Jake, clear that home, make an arrest without firing a single shot. Uh, but I was proud that the very first case I tried after being elected DA was to prosecute a man who was a, a habitual offender uh, who had shot a law enforcement officer in the line of duty. And so Jake has done an incredible job in law enforcement, uh, and I believe that he will continue to do a great job for the city of Pearl as your mayor. You know, the wonderful thing about being from Rankin County, and, and Jake Wyndham is the epitome of that and you, is you're not afraid to tout your conservative values and yet also your faith. You know, if people have a chance, they really need to check out your website or your uh, Facebook uh, page because the speech that you gave on the floor of the House of Representatives about prayer was, was truly inspiring. And, uh, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit about that uh, to our folks. Yeah, uh, last week was the National Prayer Breakfast, and so uh, a big event that brings people uh, to Washington, D.C., not just from around our country, but internationally. Uh, and so I had the opportunity last week to have uh, my son, uh, who's a, a sophomore in high school, up along with my father and father-in-law, uh, and we attended that event uh, with fellow believers, uh, and we prayed for our nation, we prayed for our president. Uh, and then following that, uh, gave us a, a floor on the house speech, uh, just talking about how important prayer is uh, to, to all, all believers uh, and how it is a, a first, uh, one of our fundamental First Amendment rights and how we must protect the ability to be able to pray, uh, to express our religion. Uh, and also talked a little bit about you know, the importance of making sure that our students have that same ability, that they have the ability to express their faith and they have the ability uh, to pray in school. Schools. And so that is something growing up in a Christian home, uh, growing up going to church that has been very important to me uh, since I was a very young child. Uh, I have brought my children up in church. And so uh, I hope that I'm able to, to use my faith uh, and, and express that uh, in a way that, that will make the people of Rankin County proud. Well, they have. You have certainly uh, been able to do that. Um, which is not always a, a very popular uh, thing going on up there on the Beltway, is it? No, it's, it's, it's really not. You, know, you, you don't have a lot of people, particularly fr from outside the Deep South, uh, that express much about their faith. Uh, it is, it's very seldom talked about. But I will tell you that, that there are many believers uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, we gather together for a congressional uh, prayer breakfast every Thursday at the Capitol. Uh, you know, there, there are various Bible studies that meet in homes, that meet in offices throughout the Capitol. There's other groups that come in uh, and offer prayers of support uh, for particular offices and members of Congress. And so, you know, and, and, and that's one thing that, that we would ask the, the people at home to um, pray, not just particularly for our office, uh, but for our, for our leadership in Washington, D.C., as we are making decisions uh, that are going to be impacting generations to come. 
You know, I know one of your your biggest supporters, uh, one of your biggest fans, is Mr. Greg Harper, uh, who yes. you you uh, uh, kind of took there in in DC after he decided that was enough was enough for him. Um, and I know you, you do you get the chance to draw on you know the knowledge that he's gained uh, from being up there. You know, uh, Greg Greg has been a huge asset to me. Um, you know, uh, both when I was on the campaign trail running after I secured the nomination, uh, Greg was very helpful uh, as uh, I was campaigning for the general election. Uh, and then after winning the general election, uh, Greg also helped me as I was looking to putting a staff together. Um, I will tell you that uh, uh, I kept a little over probably almost two thirds of Greg Harper's staff, uh, both DC uh, and in the district. Um, good, good people that just wanted to serve uh, the third congressional district of Mississippi. Uh, I still see Greg on a regular basis. Uh, Greg uh, still comes to Washington DC um, for various uh, things that are going on up here, uh, including some recent lobbying that, that Greg has recently picked up. So I have a, the ability to see Greg on a regular basis. Uh, I know that uh, he has made Pearl proud. He has made Rankin County proud. Uh, and his uh, 10 years of service uh, to this congressional district uh, has left big footsteps for me to follow in. Uh, but I'm glad to have that opportunity, and I'm glad for Greg's friendship. Congressman, finally, I know we've got spring break coming up, and then we're going to have summer vacations. And there may be some uh, folks here from Rankin County, from the city of Pearl, that may be heading up to Washington, D.C. for a break. And I know that uh, you are always uh, – open invitation to come see you. That's right. You know, anyone that is uh, planning to come to Washington, uh, we encourage them to reach out to our office. Uh, we can set up things while they're in Washington, D.C., tours of the United States Capitol, um, tours of the White House. And so we do that on a regular basis for all our constituents. And so uh, I ask anyone who is thinking about coming to Washington, please contact our office. Contact our office early, uh, particularly for the White House tours, because uh, there is a background check from the Secret Service that generally takes several weeks. But we want everyone that comes from Rankin County, that comes from the 3rd Congressional District, we want to roll out the red carpet to them. We want to make sure that they have the best experience that they could possibly have. Excellent. Well, we can only tell you up there, Keep fighting the good fight. We know that you will, and we cannot wait to see you back here uh, in the district. And, Greg, before I leave, just want to give uh, everyone the, the office number so if they do want to call and try to set something up uh, with our office while they're here, uh, area code is 202-225-5031, and, and we encourage them to please contact our office. And, and again, uh, uh, we love to see people from back home in Washington, and we want to make sure they have the best experience possible. And you absolutely do that. Again, Congressman, we want you to uh, keep those Mississippi values cooking up there. I know that you will. And uh, it's tough, but we're working with our president. Well, thank you, Greg. I just want to tell uh, everyone watching, thank them for allowing me the opportunity to serve. Uh, it is truly an honor and privilege to represent the state of Mississippi and Washington. Uh, and we will continue to work hard every day to make you proud. Our thanks to Congressman Michael Guest for taking the time to Talk with us here on This Week in Pearl, our first installment of the show. Uh, it's been a fantastic show. You know, we started off with Mayor Jake Windham, then we had Senator Dean Kirby, followed by Representative Gene Newman. Uh, you know, we look forward to this just being the first of many installments that we can bring you to keep you up to date and to bring the transparency of government to you and for you to be able to ask questions. You know, um, Senator Kirby, Representative Newman, uh, the mayor will be permanent fixtures on this show so if you have any questions that you would like to ask of them feel free to shoot them to us on our social media uh on twitter and also on facebook and you can find us under city of pearl government you can shoot those questions there or you can email them directly to me that is g flynn f-l-y-n-n at city of pearl.com and we will read those questions on the air and we will get these gentlemen to answer them for you we hope you enjoyed the first installment of This Week in Pearl. We look forward to talking to you next time.